I'm sure if you've followed me for a while that you notice that my style has been changing or just my collection has changed quite a bit over time, over the years especially, and that sometimes I do make mistakes and sometimes I get it right. So yeah, this is a tag video that my good friend Cat L has created and it is called if I had a luxury time machine. So thank you so much, Kat, for creating this really fun tag and for tagging me. I'm also going to be tagging other ladies. I am going to share with you the things that I did right in my luxury journey. And I'm also going to share with you things that I did not do so right and that I wish I knew if I could go back in time. I never really excessively bought into SLGs small leather goods. That's something that I'm super proud of myself because even in choosing my very first bag, I don't know if you guys remember, my very first handbag was the Louis Vuitton Alma PM. Even back then when I just started my luxury journey, I just went straight to the bag. I just went straight to buying a pretty expensive item actually in my opinion, especially because I was just starting out. I had worked full time for a couple years already as a professional and I had you know, just paid off my student loan. And the first thing that I decided to buy from a premium luxury house was a bag. And throughout the years after that, I did the same thing. I never really bought too many small leather goods. I figured instead of spending small amounts of money here and there, just to maybe get something from that collection or from that fabric or from that color, I'd rather just pull all that money together, I'll like save all that money together and buy the actual bag that I want. So I was always more into handbags rather than the small leather goods, which is something that I feel I did really right because I'm not judging the people that love their small leather goods. Obviously, if you collect them, amazing for you. But I just feel like for me, it would have been an easy slippery slope. And they are very great entry level prices into luxury. My point is small leather goods are a dangerous place and I just never really got into it. And it's something that I guess my mentality is just go big or go home, I suppose. And that I'm still regretting at this point is that I did not buy a classic flap in the medium large size as soon as I could. This is something that I totally missed a boat on. It also is a different season of life because I was a young professional and I had probably just acquired a mortgage at the time because like, yeah, I bought my first property in 2007. So I just didn't feel like a $3,000 or $4,000 bag was something that you should do or that's something that I, you know, feel comfortable doing, right? So I really did not go into Chanel again uh, in 2016, like 15, 16. That's really when I started my journey into Chanel and really started curating and adding to my collection from the Chanel fashion house, which, you know, ends up being my favorite and it really is the style that I associate the most. So having said that, having been someone who goes big or goes home because I don't spend on the little things, I should have bought my medium large as early as I could. So basically as early as when I bought my Chanel Jumbo because even though I do own quote unquote a classic, it was pre-loved, it was a single flap and it was a jumbo size. So it's not technically my perfect classic flap bag for me and for my frame and for my liking, even though I love it, but it's just not the one. I think back in 2016, the, the medium flat was still maybe in the $6,000 range. If I had a time machine, I would just go back to 2016 instead of buying my jumbo flap, go back and buy that medium large and get over with it as early as I could and as early as I could afford it and had the disposable income to do so. I started growing and curating my Chanel collection. When it comes to really hot items, like really popular sought after items, and especially when they're seasonal, the moment you see it, you just cannot hesitate. You just have to get it because they are really hard to come by afterwards. When it sells out, it usually it means it's gone unless you go the personal shopping route, which is, you know, like, you would have to pay a premium at this point. So there's just no way around it. You either buy it when you see it, when you had the opportunity, or you just know that you're giving up that chance and that opportunity 
and that you better not regret it because if you did, then you would have to go to the personal shopping route, which means that you would have to pay a premium. So, you know, I think I did right for, for the most part and, you know, to the point where I have a collection where I feel like I'm, I feel like I am at peace with my collection. Like in, in terms of like any Chanel style handbags that I could possibly own, that I can possibly need acquiring one too many bags of the same style. So I'm talking about duplicates such as, you know, I have two Gabrielles. At one point I had three Coco handles, all mini size, two Neverfull. So like those are examples of, you know, not being a super perfect, smooth sailing type of journey. I maybe had a little bit of fear of missing out because when I love a style so much, I just feel like I need a backup and need to buy like another color as well. So that's something that I'm not as good about and that I wish if I had gone back in time that I would just tell myself, okay, Amy, calm down. <laughs> you don't need two of the same bag, especially because they're even the same size, even though they're different colors. I know they're different, but like, they're still really the same and at the end of the day, I think most of us can agree that you usually gravitate towards one favorite anyway. I realized and found out the style and the size of bag that really works for me, which are typically minis. Once I realized that those Deauville totes, those larger totes don't really work for my lifestyle and just for my liking, I just completely halted that and told myself never to buy a large bag anymore. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna share is a big one. And I really do wish that I can have a time machine and go back and redo it. One of the bags that I sold was the 17B Gold Mini, also known as the Rose Gold Caviar Mini. I was so sort of like concerned about the fact that it was a pink bag and that was, and that it was a metallic bag and that it was a rectangular shape versus a square shape, which I prefer. And even though I did not immediately regret it, I do regret it now because it was a unicorn and even though if I'm not gonna wear it all the time, it is one of those bags that oh, I just wish that I, I did have it because, you know, fast forward to 2021, the minis are like, you know, $6,000 now and, and to get a unicorn like that, you would have to pay a personal shopper to find it for you and pay literally an arm and a leg. So like, even though it was not the perfect bag for me, but it was still a perfect collectible. And I wish that I still had it because I am kind of sometimes compensating for it. I said last year that I'm never going to sell anything from my Chanel collection anymore unless I'm a thousand percent sure. And that kind of made me become a hoarder as a result. So it's kind of like because I made that mistake and that I had that kind of experience with a unicorn bag that made me become someone who is too scared of selling anything. And even if I did make a mistake, I better just keep it until I'm a hundred percent, a thousand percent sure before I let anything go. And so now my collection has grown to over 20 bags, which to me, for me personally, I feel like is a bit overwhelming. It's just one of those things that kind of snowballed into a different behavior and now I'm like the total opposite of it you know so yeah if I had a time machine I would go back rectify that mistake so that I don't become this hoarder now <laughs> that I tend to buy new styles coming out really really early on the most notable examples are the Gabrielle, the Chanel 19, Mutsi Pochette, Pochette Mitsis. I actually had it since 2013. That's just right around when it came out. That's when the bag is at its lowest price because it's the introduction price. And it's also when the bag itself has a lot of hype around it. So it was usually more trending, it was more popular, and a lot of people are trying to get their hands on. So even if I made a mistake in buying those things, I can probably still sell it and recuperate my money because they're still being sought after. That's not what I'm recommending you guys to do. Don't buy to sell, but it is something that can work in your favor if you already know that you like the bag anyway, so might as well buy it when it's the cheapest. I really love fashion. I really love dressing up and styling. So I tend to buy a lot of clothes and I tend to buy them in case I need it for a specific occasion. So 
that's really a problem that I've always had. I've always loved styling and dressing up and everything since I was a teenager. As soon as I could afford my own clothes. When you do that with high street and fast fashion, financially is not as big of an impact, but when it comes to ready to wear, when one garment can be a thousand dollars or more, it really is a big deal because you can't just buy things just in case you need it as much, right? I mean, sometimes you can do it, but like, it is kind of a habit for me. So in a way, I have a lot of duplicates of styles of clothing because usually when I like something, I buy it in different colors, similar to what I do with my handbags, duplicating handbags. So um, if I could go back in time, I, I don't know, I'll just have to learn to be more minimal with my clothing. Not minimalist because I still love fashion too much. And to end this video in a positive note, I kind of learned my experience from not buying the classic flap when it was still acceptable to buy. I made sure that I did not miss the boat for the Lady Dior because Dior bags in general really don't keep their value. So if I bought one, I really am going to keep it and I really uh, am buying it because I, I just love the bag. So last year i decided to bite the bullet i bought it when it was still relatively reasonable you know like the price has gone up a lot but it was still relatively reasonable and now look at it the mini lady dior has gone up by another eight nine hundred dollars i made sure to not let that happen to the lady dior so i'm super glad that i did that that i at least rectified that for Dior. I'm not so sure I'm buying another Dior bag, but never say never. I just am glad that I got it when I got it. Maybe you did some of the things that I did wrong, or maybe you did some of the things I did right. Let me know down below. And thank you so much, Kat, for tagging me. Uh, definitely make sure to watch her video. I will link it down below. If you guys are new to my channel, I would love to have you back. So please do consider subscribing. And to the rest of you, thank you so much again for watching and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye!